Welcome back to East by West Farms where we grow what we eat and we eat what we grow. In this video I'm gonna make a tofu machine. Now we've been making tofu for a little bit using plastic boxes. The idea is relatively simple. It's just a simple dovetailed box that has some support on the bottom. There will be a support in the bottom. I need to drill some holes in there and some channels that the juice can drop off. And then we're gonna have a top plate like this and the basically the idea is that the slurry gets into the box we put a weight on top and squeeze the juice out so that we get tofu left over. I'm taking some 2x4s, uh, glue them, edge glue them together, cut some dovetails. I've got some little miters on the top just to make it look a little bit nicer that's really just cosmetic. What I decided to do is to go with a dovetail where the tails are about uh, exactly twice the width as the pins. Suppose it's the most stable, most sturdy dovetail you can find. I didn't really make a plan or anything. It is just about that wide and just about that long. You don't want to make it too big because then you need too much dough material. You don't want to make it too small because you know, smaller boxes are much harder to build than bigger boxes. I made a mortise and tenon joint on the bottom and some rails on the bottom to support the pressure. I want to make the bottom plate removable so we can clean it easier. And the tools are pretty straightforward. It's a, a saw from the home improvement store. I've got one luxury item that's a back saw. This has a, a supported spline also from the home improvement store. This has finer teeth, which is nice for cutting the dovetails. Marking gauge. A plane is important. Now that's a <laughs> little rusty plane that says Stanley on it. I think we got it from Harbor Freight Tool or the box store. I'm not really sure. Yeah, the key in using planes is to uh, sharpen the blade and get a smooth a smooth surf, a smooth sole. Uh, I've got a uh, block plane that's nice to clean up things and, and break break edges. You don't want to get your hands injured by with sharp edges. I've got a set of chisels that's just a standard set from the box store, plastic, yellow plastic handles. I think this is one inch, three quarter inch. Uh, half an inch and a quarter inch and then I do have a set of carving tools that I bought from Alibaba, Ali, Ali, AliExpress. I think I paid a hundred dollars for it or so and that's a pretty comprehensive set of um, carving tools for what I'm doing it's plenty good enough. And then of course you need some form of support and some way of holding your work pieces. So we've got this, uh, this workmate that we bought many years ago at the home improvement store. Yeah, that should fit. I'm not gonna do a dry fit. A little bit clean up here and then it's gonna be okay.
the next thing is to do the plate that sit, uh, sits at the bottom of the tofu maker. And you'll be cognizant of the support beams that are running underneath the, the plate. Obviously there's no point in drilling holes at this location. I marked out the V grooves. I'm gonna take a straight chisel and carve out the grooves. So I think the easiest way of doing that is really just using hand tools, hand chisels and carve out the V's and do a kind of 45 degree angle as long as it's consistent and uniform throughout the groove. So that's the contour of the groove. I got a little bit off here. I finished carving the bottom plate. The plate split in half. It kind of cracked here along a, 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 a ring. Pine is not the most stable wood. It's, I, it, it's stable wood, but it's not the strongest wood in the world. That's the top plate. I uh, put the characters for tofu on there. Now that didn't turn out so well, so Haying wrote this for me, which looks a lot nicer. Uh, and I'm trying my hand in carving the Chinese characters for tofu. Carving Chinese characters is a daunting task because you really need to know how the characters are drawn with a ink brush. It's done. Um, do fu. Um, it's not do fu. Do fu. Is it understandable? Yeah, yeah. It's my handwriting.
The original plan was to just put some rocks or some heavy stuff on top of this plate. And that would probably work, but we did change our mind and decided that we make this a bit so more sophisticated. So I made another box that fits right in here in the inside box. Now the idea now is to put this box on top of that uh, piston and connect it with, uh, with uh, some small um, mortise, mortised in support beams. The mortise is in the bottom of the box already. I beveled the edges of the box so it fits in the grooves. And what I need to do now is cut mortises in the bottom of this plate. Put that in. Put that in and then just trace the mortise with a pin. Yeah, that should work. perfectly aligned. So I traced it out. I will take a ruler and make it straight. Pine wood is easy to damage because it's just so soft. So. And here it is, a tofu press made from wood cutoffs from the burn pile. It is a basically two dovetail boxes with hand, hand cut dovetails. And I'm using very simple tools that you can pick up for a few dollars from the Home Depot store. So it really doesn't take an awful lot of money to do something useful for the homestead. It takes a little bit of skill and that comes with practice. The last thing I will do, and I'm not going to show this here, is to coat the wood with some shellac that protects the wood from moisture. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please give us a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to follow our journey with the East by West Farms, please click the subscribe button.